Welcome. Oh, I, I cut it off too early. Well, welcome to episode 53 of Story Strategy Live, where I cut off my favorite part of the little intro song by accident. I was so excited to get to today's episode because we have special guests, kind of kind of multiple, um, if you consider me as having multiple personalities. Um, I am Nancy, and we're here with Don and Marika, and I'm also Delancey. So, I was going to say, you're not Nancy today. Not you're today. Delancey today. Not today. Yeah. So um, Marika and I are here as our co-writing pen names because we have co-written a series and that's what we're going to talk about today is sort of ins and outs of co-writing, what to do, what not to do, what little or few things we've learned in the short amount of time we've been doing it. <laughs> so what's new with you guys? I officially no longer have children in the public school system that's as crazy. of today. My son officially, he, he doesn't graduate until May 30th, but today was his last day of school. So all of the grades are in. That's exciting. And he passed. And he passed. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's yes, what's important. <laughs> Luckily, that maybe, wasn't a maybe with your kids, that is, Yeah, I was going to say, maybe that's not <laughs> something you have to worry about a lot, which is what you want. Yes, yeah. But he's, it's kind of weird to be like, they're not in school anymore. They're, well, I suddenly have a sophomore in college and a recent that's, high school graduate. That's school. It's just a less parentally involved school. Yeah. And much more expensive. There's Ooh. that. Yeah, that too. Well, so we have special guest Marika Ray here today. Marika, where are you joining us from? So I'm in Huntington Beach, California, and I have one kiddo in college who just finished her finals. So she's done. And then I have one kiddo in middle school and California's a little different. They don't get out until I think it's June 18th is her last day, um, but she'll be graduating from middle school. So she has a graduation on June 18th. Ah. Um, yeah. I have one graduating from middle school too, but I don't think there's any kind of formality involved. <laughs> Maybe a party. I don't know. Full gowns and everything. I was like, You're kidding. My parents were like, good job, move on. Yeah, good job, now go rake the yard. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We got yes. four more years, don't celebrate yet. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we have Kate and Julie here and somebody else whose name hasn't popped up yet. Um, but we usually get a lot of people listening uh, on the podcast after the fact. And then um, I think people watch the video later either on Facebook or on our website as well. So. Don't be dissuaded by our low numbers. Yes. <laughs> it's actually very disconcerting. Like, audio? Audio because we see this, I, I don't know if you guys can see the little eyeball number. I can see how many people are here live, supposedly. I'm not sure I trust uh, Facebook's accounting or StreamYards. Um, but then people will say later, like, oh, I, I, yeah, I watched that show with, you know, and I'm always like, you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess that's good. Which we appreciate. We should say we appreciate that. Please watch yes, us. No, it's awesome. It's just sort of surprising because I'm just sitting here in my, you know, office chatting. <laughs> so we're talking about co-writing. We and should talk about that. Yes. And so <laughs> I want to know how y'all decided to start co-writing. I want to know how y'all, how, how the team became a team. Well, we became Del Rica before we decided yeah. to co-write. <laughs> well, so I hadn't heard of Delancey until um, some mutual friends of mine said, hey, she's releasing a Mr. Match book. It wasn't it was the, the first one. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, hey, you should do some promo with her. You guys write very similarly. And so I was like, okay, that sounds great. I had a book coming out too. So that's how we originally um, started talking. And then I read her Mr. Match book and I was like, Okay, we do write pretty similar. <laughs> so, and then I started realizing, okay, a lot of the people in her reader group are in my reader group. So it just, it kind of made sense that we became friends from there. Um, when did we first meet? Was that it? Romance? I think it ran. Yeah. Think so. um, and I, it was funny because the more we chatted, because initially I think somebody was like, you guys should do some co some cross promotion because Mr. Match is like a math whiz and MomCom, I think, was the book that you were promoting. Yeah. Um, it was like a science guy or girl, yeah. or it was like a whole science guy. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so we made this like little um, 
promo piece with you know scientific symbols or whatever and <laughs> cross promoted. <laughs> yeah, like. Um, but then I read your book and was like, oh, this is hilarious. Like this is I would I would write this book. And yeah. so the more we started chatting with each other, the more we were like, oh yeah, I'm from California too. Oh yeah, me too. Like that we just had a ton in common. And yep. so at some point along the line, either before or after we actually met each other at Romance Author Mastermind, um, we kind of both were like, we should write something together. And then the whole like, okay, what will it be process had to happen. And and kind of nothing came of that for a long time. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we came up with a whole series arc. We had an idea, um, yeah. kind of talked about what we wanted to do. And then as is normal for both you and I, we got too busy doing other things. And so we just never wrote it. Um, well, and, and I think it was a good idea, but it didn't like we were both like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It didn't like give you that, like, I we want, want to go write this right now. Like it wasn't yes, that. It didn't feeling. make me want to push everything aside and write that. And so we just kind of let it sit there. And then until you contacted me, when was that? Was that February? There was a lot of snow. I feel like, well, so we had one of our critical conversations was when I was on a writing weekend in a hotel here locally in Denver and I was snowed in. And so yeah. that was, I think that was in March. So yeah, I think at the earliest I could have possibly contacted you initially was must have been late February, February, like late February. Yeah. 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 Um, and you just had a great idea and you're like, Hey, I see books of this genre doing well. Is this something you'd want to write with me? And I love the concept. And so I'm like, sure. I mean, I have another book I'm supposed to be writing, but why not? Yeah. I, and I had no room in my schedule to write a book. Which I was gonna say, I was and, and Delancey had another book she was supposed to be writing. And, and my whole year was already planned because I got onto all these like co-writing, writing in other people's worlds kind of things. So there were no, that was the other thing that I was really excited about this working out for was there were no um, Delancey books coming out this year, at least until the the fall because I had signed up for so many random things and because we moved and, you know, there was that pandemic thing. Um, so it was exciting that to come thing. up with, with a concept that could like get my name on a fun rom-com sometime before the end of the year. Well, and quite frankly, when we started brainstorming, it came fast and it came easy. It really did. Yeah. And so I think I have multiple screenshots of us, you know, messaging back and forth going, gosh, this is going too easy. Almost like, are we doing something wrong? Because this is too easy. And I'm wondering if maybe no, that that might mean something's right. Like, It felt easy. I mean, there were points for sure in the middle of both books where we were like, wait, oh no, what's, uh, I don't think this is working. <laughs> right. But the best thing about doing it together was that, well, we'll talk about our schedule a little bit because I think that helped us a lot. But also like I would hit that moment of doubt at a totally different point than Marika would hit it. And so we were always there to talk each other off the ledge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I'd go back through, I think the last one I went and reread like three quarters of what we had written. And I'm like, no, no, no. I think we're on the right path. I think this is good. And sometimes when you're alone in your little office and you're typing and you can't see the forest for the trees kind of thing. But when you have this co-author, you have that outside but yet inside influence that can be like no, no 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 keep the you know keep on course this is good and I think I think you and I both have, one of our weaknesses is that we get off course we we like shiny yeah. new things and well, so and we I love having, like hilarious tangents <laughs> yes yes and I think having the other person to be like no this is what we're doing <laughs> that's too many mannequins Marika too many <laughs> <laughs> never too many <laughs> Yeah. So talk about your actual process. Like, how did you get started? Who writes what? What kind of programs do you use? What's your system? We've been writing in Google Docs, um, yeah. although it scares me. I don't know why, because I don't own it. It's not like on my computer. I don't know. So I. I say, Google Docs is usually very non aggressive. I don't I know. understand why it's frightening. Because <laughs> uh, I'm old, mostly, I think. Um, <laughs> So I, I also have been writing in Scrivener sometimes, like when I get those bouts of concern, I'll write and then I'll cut and paste. 
Um, but mostly we've just been going back and forth in a Google document. We did, so for those wondering too, we did actually find a contract off the internet and kind of made it our own contract. Oh and yeah, I guess to start with the, the whole process thing, we should talk about like setting it up. We did make it legal and we, you know, and there were considerations there were like, should we just create a new pen name? You know, like, like Piper Rain is, you know, a, a pen name for two people coming together. Um, and so we considered that, but quite frankly, that's, um, she and I both had ideas of other pen names we each wanted to do. And we're like, okay, that is too many pen names. Let's just put both of our names on it. Um, so that when was when we had. We were writing rom-com already and we knew this would be rom-com. So that was a match. The only real hesitation I had was that these are sweet and Delancey Stewart books are not. Um, but Marika has written sweet books under her name. So we figured as long as we brand it in a very clear way, then that would be okay. So we decided to use both of our names. And um, so that was written into the contract. Other things that we made sure to talk about ahead of time were um, like how were we going to pay for marketing? Um, did we need to set up a separate KDP account to upload these books? Um, or did we want to split the effort, that kind of stuff? Um, so Marika very generously decided, um, well, we decided together that she would upload all the books and covers, um, and take care of that, which has been, which also means she sees the, the money, um, because she gets all the reports and stuff. So, I get screenshots and stuff kind of letting me know what's going on and I can, <laughs> yeah. I can look at the rank and the, the reviews obviously, but um, I feel like I've got this whole like separate thing happening over here that one day we'll like, I'll get a check or something. <laughs> and be like, Ooh. Oh, magically <laughs> pop really big well, ones. It'll be a small yes. check because we have spent most of the money on advertising. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So you set up your plan, you set up a contract, you laid out your, boundaries basically and yeah, so and we talked about what would happen like if we were found ourselves in a situation where we were not as jolly and happy and having a great time as we are now um you know like should this end how will it end what will we do um and i don't remember what we decided but it's in the contract <laughs> so <laughs> yeah we basically said like if we put out this first book and it completely bombs and people hate it then we're done like yeah we're not gonna keep trying to wedge this into our schedule to write a whole series like if it doesn't do as well as our other books have done, then what's the point? Because when we didn't know for up. sure, we didn't know how the co-writing would go. We didn't know if that would even work. Um, and we didn't know that we wouldn't end up somehow hating each other or whatever. So we kind of wrote, you know, kind of wrote that into the contract as well. Yeah. So you sit down on, okay, chapter one, blank page. How did y'all get started? Well, we brainstormed, I think, what do we do? We, I, what do we do? Because we've done it three times now. We come up with the hero and the heroine. Um, and for the first book, we had to come up with the setting and everything too. Kind of like, what's where is all this going to happen? We knew we wanted small town. We knew we wanted like a family feeling. And so we had to decide, is that going to be a family of like brothers or cousins? Or how's that going to work? So we kind of picked all the the big plot points and then we we kind of plotted out the first book in super vague, just like we knew texting had to be important. And so we figured that part out. And then the rest of it was sort of a free for all. Um, am I right? Well, and we just decide, we said, okay, um, you had a much clearer idea of, of the hero and I had a much clearer idea of who I wanted the heroine to be. So we said, okay, you're going to write that point of view. I'm going to write the female's point of view. And, um, and I know that's a, a, a difference among a lot of co-authors is sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll just do chapter by chapter or sometimes they do. Somebody I was listening to the other day said that they write 2000 words. And even if they're in the middle of a sentence, middle of a paragraph, middle of a chapter, they hand it off to the other person. And I'm what? Like, the chaos of that. Oh no. I'd be like, what yeah. are you trying to say here? I have no idea. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, I couldn't. Mm, no, that wouldn't work. I can't do that. My, my brain can't, I can't do that. So thankfully no. you were willing to be like, Hey, I'll do this POV. You do the other. And that worked out fine. Although we have swapped for book three. Yeah. I've written the hero for two, but in the third one, Marika's going to write the man. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
Yes. So did you set up any boundaries? Like um, if there's something you disagree on, you each get two things that you get to, you know, veto or one thing that I get to have a, I get to keep this card or. No, I haven't really. We're pretty easygoing people. I don't feel like either one of us is like a, no, it has to be this way. Like if I feel like, oh, Delancey feels strongly about this. Like I was really excited to put some mannequins into <laughs> the first book and I felt pretty strongly about it. And she just went, okay. And so, sure. yeah. Let's Every book those. is better with mannequins. <laughs> is that like an offshoot of taxidermy? Is that, does well, that connect this is to why, that thread for you? Or This is probably why I was okay with it <laughs> because it's not like why I avoid the weird. <laughs> Choose your co-author wisely. <laughs> yes, look for wombats and taxidermy if possible. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, okay. but I, I think that is a valid point. You look for if you're if you're thinking you might like to write with somebody, just because they're your best buddy doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work out. Um, looking at everything from what you what you want to write and can you agree on a plot and stuff because that that can be difficult. To you know, what is your actual writing schedule? And for us, because I write first thing in the morning, like at 5 a.m. And Marika's in a different time zone. Um, by the time I'm like, I've finished, you know, put the keyboard away for the morning and I'm off to get my kids ready for school. She's just getting up. So she wakes up to a brand new chapter and then she's got the whole rest of the day to work in. And I'm not sure exactly. You usually seem to write kind of afternoon-y or, or mid-morning for you. So mid-morning for me, but, I, but it works perfectly because I get up, I read your chapter. I get my kiddo off to school and then I go work out. And while I work out, I'm sitting there thinking about, okay, this is where Delancey just went. Where am I going to go? And then by the time I sit down, probably, you know, 9 30, 10 AM, I'm ready to write. And then by that evening, there's a new chapter for you to read and look through mm -hmm. and simmer overnight. And then the next morning you write your chapter. It just, I mean, and just, before you know it, but when you're writing two chapters a day, it's quick. Yeah, and these are shortish books. They're 50,000 words about. So, I mean, that's how many chapters is that usually? 20 something, 22, 25, yeah. maybe? Yeah. So, so that's happening two, three, in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, did y'all commit to a chapter a day from each person, or how did you set up that schedule? I feel like we um, got so excited, it just sort of happened that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you had something and then I had a wedding I was going to one weekend. And so there was a few, a couple of days here and there that we agreed to take off. Um, well, we kind of took weekends off. Yeah, there was one weekend we did write on the weekend, but mostly we take weekends off. Um, but that was just because we both do that normally. So right. that worked out. So we, I mean, our writing process is very similar. And I think too, we're both linear writers. I'm guessing, cause I don't think we've actually talked about this, but I cannot like go write the ending and then come back and write the beginning. Cause I figure out the characters as I'm writing. So yeah. So, you know, if I was trying to write with somebody who works like that, it wouldn't work for me and probably would not work for them either. Cause I'd be like, I did what? No, <laughs> no. And I need, I need at least like, I think what we did for book two is we did, okay, here are the hero and heroine. Um, here's the basic structure, the tropes. Here's maybe um, that dark moment. And here's maybe an idea for a resolution. But it was, you know, just enough of a skeleton framework for me to know where I'm going, but still completely flexible enough so that when we're writing and getting to know our characters, if we wanted to change something or veer off in a different direction, whoops, sorry. That was totally something we could do. And that works for me. I'm not, um, I can't just write with nothing, with no yeah, outline, but I can't write. I don't also like to have everything really outlined and not have any flexibility. And you yeah. seem to do well with the same. That's exactly sort of my, yeah. When I write for myself, I'm usually, I have like a little paragraph that's going to tell me kind of like what I think is going to happen in this scene. And sometimes I follow it and sometimes I don't, but I do much better if I at least have that kind of guidepost. And what's been great is that Marika at the end of her chapter will write in a different color, will make me a little paragraph that says, so, you know, I just did this and now I think this should happen and maybe they have a phone call and, you know, like give me some ideas about, and then I, I may or may not 
do exactly right. what she says. And then I do something yep. similar for her. Like if I was going to keep writing this, here's where I would take the next part. And yep. that way we kind of are following the same path, but we're both able to kind of jump off where we want to. Well, and quite frankly, there's been a couple of times where I'll write that little paragraph and then you're like, yeah, I didn't go there. <laughs> I was so well, and, but I, and I it's funny because I sit down life. fully intending to go there and then something else happens. <laughs> yeah, but I love it because I'm like, wow, this is the beauty of having two brains doing this is that I never would have gone there on my own, but you had a completely different thought and it made it so much better. So I, or just I different. Think it's great. <laughs> it's I fun. Think it's I think that's what keeps it interesting because if you're just writing by yourself and you're reading your own words, you already know what they say, kind of, right. hopefully, right. Um, unless you're writing drunk like Hemingway, but <clears throat> that's not recommended. Um, but it's like a little surprise every day to get to read, you know, a new chapter. It's like a choose your own adventure almost. Like I flip the page and there's a whole thing. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen now? Well, and I think too, like a lot of times when I'm writing my own stuff, I start writing, but I forget little details, especially because yeah. we're writing a series. It's a series of brothers. And so there's a lot of family details and I'll forget a lot of that or the continuity is not quite there. And then I'll have one of my beta readers and they'll be like, uh, this doesn't make sense because you contradicted yourself. But when we're writing together, one of us catches on to that very quickly. And so we course correct much sooner rather than, you know, when I hand off my own books to a beta reader, it, the whole book's written. And then if they catch a problem there, I'm like, oh crap, the whole thing's gotta <laughs> change. So yeah. I like that we catch that stuff sooner. Well, and that was gonna be one of my questions is how did y'all approach editing after you get it done? Yeah, um, we pretty much both self edit. Um, we're on a super fast publishing timeline. Yeah. We've taken a little bit of a break here because I had some commitments in the month of May that I have to get knocked out before we can start writing the, well, we started the third book, but we, we haven't really dove into it. Um, so because of that quick tempo, um, and because of how fast this project kind of originated, we opted to Marika will read the whole thing when we're done. Um, I'll give it a final read. We'll both kind of add what we feel like it's missing. And then <clears throat> I'll go through it with my editor hat on and just try to clean things up, um, make sure that there's continuity. And and then that's pretty much it. Um, I have a couple of ARC readers that are absolutely wonderful proofreaders. And mine, they, yeah. They're so wonderful. Like I constantly, every time they send me something with like, hey, I found an error, I'm like, thank you so much i love you like i just i super appreciate them so by the time it comes out on amazon it's pretty darn clean um, yeah i have a couple that are like that too so it's yeah. almost like having a team of proofreaders then go through it and i think they have fun finding things so they're I really looking they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right there i found it <laughs> well I, what i was wondering about with the editing process is if when you go back through and you read it if one of you hits this point where you're like oh Okay, now that's not going to work, but that's in her section. So I got to tell her that's not going to work. How do you approach that? Or how would you recommend somebody approach that if they're running into that in their co-writing co relationship? I'm hoping that you wouldn't find that at the end, though, because we... No. Well, and here's the other thing. I think we both have enough experience having written enough books at this point in this genre that we, we know the pacing and the tempo and the beats to hit. So there aren't gonna be giant story or plot level problems probably. Um, but if, you know, so, it, usually it's the next day. Right. If I find something, I'll, I'll be like, hey, yes. I don't think this will work because of this. And we always write notes. So on the Google doc, you know, because we have to write, um, read the other person's stuff, their chapter every night usually that's when we put, we highlight something, we'll put a little note that says, oh, I don't know about this. And um, I typically don't change anything in your chapters. I'll usually put a note and say, hey, this, or you'll put a note in mine. Like, like I will I'm, admit to changing things in your chapters. <laughs> well, I'll change little, like a word here and there, but like, not like <laughs> fundamental things. But like yeah. I was flying home from Florida and I'm trying to write a chapter so that we can stay on our pace. And I literally have a kid behind me, like kicking my chair. It was like, <laughs> the flight was late. It was the flight from hell. 
and I wrote the chapter and it was like their first kiss or something. Yeah. <laughs> she was amazing. She wrote a note. She goes, can, can we change, can you do, redo their first kiss? Because I'm not feeling it. And I reread it later <laughs> once I was home and well rested. And I was like, yeah, that sucks. That was so <laughs> It was, I don't, there was something like really anatomical about it or something. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, or you used a word that like just pulled me out of the like romance. So I was I like, ooh. Know. I don't know. I think I was delirious on the airplane when I was writing it. So I don't even know. But but for those kind of things, we just write each other a note. And again, you got to know who you're writing with. Like we're not mean people. Like we're we're not like. I think you would need a partner who's honest, but not brutally honest. Mm -hmm. And I, so Delancey will leave me notes of, of that are perfectly honest. Like, I don't think this is going to work, but it's not in a mean way. And she always suggests, what if we did this instead? And I try to do that for her as well of like, Hey, you know, for this last book, the book two that we released, um, we were a bit worried about the hero and how we had written him. And you know, I think we had to, we were really careful to, to straddle this line of a hero that that's awkward, but yet not off putting to a reader. Um, yeah. So that was a constant check and balance of us going, okay, I wrote this. Do you think it was too much too over the line? What do you think? So again, like what Delancey said, I don't think we see stuff at the very end. That's a big problem. I think we really do catch it chapter by chapter. Well, and it sounds like open communication is a huge part of making this successful, that you yeah. have to be open to the other person's ideas and their criticism and feedback and all of that. Yes. Yeah. One, I think if you can, I think what surprised me and has been so pleasant was the sense of maybe community is not the right word since there's only two of us, but it's almost like this, and we were already friends, so it's not a new friendship, but it's almost like this whole new little fun thing in my life has opened up. And all of a sudden, like we're, we're texting with each other more and like chatting on Facebook and like we're, cause we have this thing we're doing and yeah, it's just been really gratifying and fun. Yeah. Because writing is such a solo sport, right? And then totally. if you're a co-author, it's no longer solo. And that's really fun because now we have somebody to bounce ideas off of and complain to, you know, sometimes <laughs> <what's that? laughs> and complain to, <laughs> and complain to. Yeah. I think, um, I think where it gets hard is the marketing side of things. And I know we'll get there at some point in the conversation, but that's hard too, because we wanted this book to be in Kindle unlimited. And when you have a book in KU, um, you can't publish through a, like a third party publishing company. Um, so I had to publish the books under my, you know, Kindle account, my KDP account. And, um, which means I'm the only one that can run Amazon ads. Um, I'm the only one that sees the data, right. Of pre-orders coming in or, or sales data, pages read, that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, that's just an added complication. I suppose we could have gone wide with our series and published it through a third party. Publisher. Yeah, but we had a good reason for going into KU. We'd seen, yeah. um, we were watching some other books with the text trope and thought that we were trying to catch on to um, a trend that we thought was hot at a certain time. And so all those books that we were using as comps were in KU and it just made sense to try to mimic what they had done as closely as possible. And in case you guys are wondering, we, because we are friends with and we're in communication with another co-writing team that wrote some texting books, um, I did actually get their permission to, <laughs> to co-write books in the texting genre because they're coming out almost in tandem. And so we're all rooting for each other and that's been kind of cool too. Yeah, they were another co-writing pair. And I thought they were amazing because rather than seeing it's like, oh, you want to compete with us, it wasn't that at all. They were like, yeah, that's great because the more people writing in this trope makes it mm -hmm. a hotter trope. So yeah, do yeah. it. And I thought that was amazing of them. Yeah. Well, and they're both, I mean, you meet, Dawn, you know, because you've been in this community for a long time, but the, the romance world, so many of the indie authors especially are just like a rising tide y'all let's get on you know i'll bring you up let me what can i do for you how can i help you and that's exactly what this was when i poked them and said hey so i have an idea and marika and i are talking about it would it 
would it be wrong for us to jump in here? And they were like, oh my God, no, do it. Yeah. Yes, it's a very supportive community and that's great. That's really great. So tips for people who are thinking about approaching this. Um, have a strong idea to start with and make sure that you're both excited about it. And I guess for the first book, kind of talk it all the way through to make sure that you are thinking the same thing and that one of you is not thinking you're writing a thriller while the other one thinks you're writing a rom-com. I don't know. <laughs> is that a good tip? <laughs> That's an awesome tip. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, what do you think it would be more difficult for an author who is just starting out to co-write with someone or because do you think the experience you, both of you have in your own careers have made this easier or do you think starting out together would be easier? What's your opinions on that? Well, what do you think? I think, I think, I think the two authors would be, would need to be fairly equal as far as audience size so if you have somebody who's well established with somebody who's brand new, um, you could do that and it will certainly help that brand new author find a new audience, but it's not exactly fair to the person with the huge audience because the smaller author is not really bringing an audience to the table. Um, so, you know, Delancey and I have pretty similar audience sizes, pretty similar books out. Um, so that was a match. And I think there were just so many things that matched up that it just made sense, you know, our personalities, how we like to write, what we write. I mean, we both, a lot of what we write is small town, so that made sense for what we were doing. Um, so I think a lot of it is, is finding a match, which I know sounds dumb, but I think sometimes you can get so excited about an idea that you move forward with it so quickly, you haven't really thought out the little details. And there's so many little details that you have to agree on that you, you know, definitely be excited because that makes the project a ton of fun, but make sure before all that excitement that, that you are a good match. And I think we already knew that uh, we were just waiting to find the right idea and the right excitement. And once we found that, then we were off and running. Yeah, I think that's all true. I, I would say too, a brand new author might struggle with some of the pieces that just came naturally to us both because of our experience levels, just kind of knowing how the story should run, being confident about the plotting and the actual writing. Um, you know, I think if you, if you were that new author writing with a really experienced author, that would be fantastic. But again, it would be a little bit unfair because one person's really guiding the other. And that's, that's not at all what was going on in this situation. And so things to avoid for people who are thinking about doing this. <laughs> Y'all both just made the exact same thing. <laughs> We're sisters <laughs> from another mister. Um, yeah, I just, exact same expression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, all the things we just said, avoid those. <laughs> okay, yeah. avoid those. The opposite of that, well, don't do that. Yeah. The other thing that was hard that I, I never, like, I didn't think about at first and it wasn't hard. It was just, um, was like the covers, getting the covers made because like, well, evidently I have the worst taste in the world. Um, and that's why I will no longer ever even consult on my own covers because <laughs> not only did we go through this process with Kelly who made the covers, um, but I'm working with Social Butterfly to rebrand the Single Tree series again with Kelly, who does all my covers. And every conversation that we have, they'll be like, "Oh, uh, we should change his pants color because the guy in the last book was wearing black pants." And I was like, "Yeah, like they could be khaki." And <laughs> I won't tell you who said it, but someone in a little voice message is like, "Yeah, um, different pants, but not not khaki. Khaki hasn't been hot, <laughs> like." Maybe ever. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Y'all have adorable covers. I love the covers for this series. So there's and much so discussion about colors and yeah. things. And I'm always wrong. I know this. There will never be an orange cover. I know this. No orange. <laughs> I'm going to thank you for saving us from that one. Um. <laughs> yeah, I like orange. No, the covers were hard because also we were doing we're doing vector. Is that what you call them? Vector covers? Illustrated? I don't know. Covers? Illustrated covers? Sure. Illustrated? 
Yeah, um, let's do I that. don't want to see them. I just don't know what they're called. But um, so we were doing those and that was the first for me. And in fact, um, I haven't even told you Delancey yet, but um, I do have some sweet rom-coms already that I've written. And I think I'm going to rebrand all the covers to those vector covers to match so that it's yeah. like, okay, when you look at my stuff, all my sweet stuff has the vector covers. That makes sense. Stuff. Yeah. When if you so look I'm at gonna... like Emma St. Clair has really popular sweet rom-coms with illustrated covers right now. Yeah. And she has some really cute covers. Laura Burton has some really cute ones. Um, Ella, I think there's, I'm going to blank on her name, but yeah, there's a bunch that it, right now, these vector covers for rom-com for sweet rom-com, they're pretty hot right now. So yeah, getting good covers. That was, that's, that's another thing you have to agree on is, is, you know, every decision you make is a joint decision. And so again, it's finding that right person who's a match for you. Um, and so many of work. these decisions involve money. Um, and yeah. so even the best relationship can get a little off track when suddenly, yeah. you know, you're talking about spending dollars together. So yeah. <clears throat> Even our relationship, I feel like right now is a little bit inequitable in that way because Marika has been spending on AMS ads and you've been spending more than I have on Facebook ads too. So there will come a reckoning where suddenly Delancey <laughs> has to pony up. And <laughs> well, and um, that's, that's something we haven't quite figured out yet of going, yeah. okay, we've gotten paid for our first month because we haven't gotten paid yet for our first month. So going, okay, this is what we made. These are our expenses. Are we sharing equally in expenses or are we not? Um, I think we said we were, but, and, and it's so hard because it's like, I didn't mean to spend more. I just had an ad that went crazy. And so I was like, great, keep it going. And, and then her ad tanked. So I said, shut it off. And then my ad tanked. So then I, should, <laughs> so you can't really go, okay, I'm only going to spend $5 a day or whatever. It just, that's not, it doesn't work that way. When you're advertising. No, it just doesn't. So <clears throat> that's going to be a question for us in the future of how we're going to do that. Um, there was something else. For example, Delancey's been great this week. She's doing a lot of, you know, giveaways and group postings this week in various author groups. And I haven't done any of them. And so I'm sitting here going, okay, I need to like, well, get my <laughs> before together. you say I've been great, you should know that, um, Social Butterfly made a really nice spreadsheet for me and the days I was supposed to start popping in started on Monday and I forgot completely until this morning. <laughs> I sat down and went, I feel like I was supposed to be doing something and I looked and I was like, oh my God, I missed all of them. Luckily, a couple of them were like Pippa and Lucy and some people who like, I know whatever. well enough to email like, hey, can I please? But we yeah. missed, I'm sorry, a couple of good ones. I'm hoping maybe they can reschedule them for us, but that's fine. Sorry. But we also, so we, a part of this marketing plan is that we had decided, you know, because of our schedules and my kiddo's out next month, right from school. So I was like, okay, May has to be like a big writing month for me. And same for you, Delancey. So we said, we're releasing this book in May too. How are we going to do that? And we just went, okay, book two is going to be a soft launch. It just is. It's good. We're not going to put our hundred percent effort into it. Um, book one, we did, we were dropping stuff left and right. I had like a bazillion newsletter swaps. We did all these ads book two. I have one ad going and that's it. Um, so, but we've decided book three, we're definitely going to push hard on book three. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's something to decide too, in advance of, you know, it's not just the launch, it's the, the series launch of, you know, right. what do you want to do there? What are you comfortable with? What do you have the time and and energy well, is your philosophy the same? Because I think we both agreed yes. that once we have three out pushing book one again at a lower yeah. price, maybe trying to get a book bub, something like that makes a lot of sense because it'll push the read through. So right. I don't know. We're <clears throat> although we go to all the same conferences, so that's probably why we think all the same stuff. <laughs> well, and I just realized realize that we haven't said the name of the books. So y'all need to tell us the name of the books and we need to put the links in the comments. So show us the books because we cute cover. There's book one. That's the first one. Text and then do you have, do you have a paperback for book two yet? I don't have them yet. No. no. And I haven't ordered any, so I suck, um, but I will. <laughs> but we're moving. So I don't want them until I get to the new house. Yeah. No, book two is so, what we were texting. Okay. So we have so texting with the them. enemy while you were texting. Yeah, they're yep, named yep. after movies. Yep, and book three is save the last text. 
Oh, so nice. Got that one up for pre-order right now. But yeah, that and was another thing. We were trying to come up with titles and we want them to be cute. And then we're like, well, we have to have the word text in there. And that's just a whole level. We had <laughs> crazy ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, those went off the rails a bit sometimes, but I know. yeah, and book three has um, a TikTok romance. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Which is decide, can we say so? TikTok? So is Delrica <laughs> is Delrica going to have a TikTok account now? Or are y'all going to be up there doing the dances and duet things? It's not all and... dancing. There's a lot of dogs too. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gonna have dogs i have my dog on my tiktok yes okay. you do not want me to start a tiktok for del rica because i would be going back to the mannequins and it could get ugly quick i think it would <laughs> actually be hilarious <laughs> <laughs> if you have a mannequin at your house that makes it possible for you to do that i'm even more concerned <laughs> that's what i was like we're gonna need an explanation of that please it's gonna be at neiman marcus and they're gonna be like ma'am could you please stop touching <laughs> <Yeah>. your mannequins <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we yeah. are about to our wrapping up time. Is there anything else y'all want to share with our audience about co-writing? I don't know. I feel like we just spent 40 minutes yammering at each other. <laughs> Was there anything useful in here? This has been great. I think y'all put in some great tips. Okay. I don't think we have an end date, right? Do we, well, do we have an explanation on Del Rica? No, because I think what we said was three books for sure, assuming book one doesn't yeah. completely tank, which it didn't. So three books for sure. Those three are basically yeah. all planned and in the bag. And then we realized we have four brothers, so there's got to be a fourth book. Um, yep. And now we're sort of talking about, I don't know, a spinoff or something. So it's it's just fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And as long as the books are doing well, and it doesn't, mean to say that the next spinoff has to be the text trope it could be something different or we could stick with it i don't i don't know but i think we've at least decided we are going to put some breadcrumbs in one of the books that you know if we wanted to do a spinoff together that we have the groundwork there for it but yeah but that might be something you want to talk about with a co-author of you know well how long are we in this for and what if one wants to quit and the other one doesn't what do you do you know yeah I don't, we actually didn't talk about that no, we kind of didn't, but I'm sure at some point we will. I mean, I think entering into something like this, you're not quite sure what it's going to be like. And, you know, as well as we knew each other, we didn't know each other, you know, completely. So you figure some of it out as you go along. And I think luckily for us, we've kind of figured out that we're we're usually on the same page. And when we're not, we're amicable enough people <laughs> that we can probably... Like if, if yeah. she was really like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I can't imagine yeah. that I'd be like, oh, we're just no, doing, doing it, you know. <laughs> we I have a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. then that would be it, so. Well, and we both want the best for each other. Like I want Delancey Stewart books to hit friggin' number one on Amazon. So whatever it takes to get there. And if our books together are holding her back from writing that book, then we're going to stop. If these are the books that are going to do it, then I'm going to keep writing them with her. And she feels, I know she feels the same way about me. So I think that's super helpful. Again, choosing the right partner, right co-author. It's important. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you, Marika, for joining thank us. And Don for putting up with the banter. <laughs> no, I really think this was great. Good. <laughs> Well, and for those of you watching, oh, a thank you. Jenny Simon said you guys did an awesome job with Lincoln. He's adorable, but manly and competent. Thank you so much. Yay. And Julie says that she is in the process of setting up her author page and has already had a lot of people offer to help her. I think that was in response to our notes about the community just being really good. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys for hanging out with us. And I'll remind you, we are off for the rest of the summer, um, or at least for June and July. We'll be back at some point in August, no firm announcements yet, um, but hopefully with lots of new stuff and lots of new ideas to help you guys with your writing. Well, and in the meantime, we will have classes and we still have the Evident Inc. Facebook page and we still have the Story Strategy Saloon. So we will still be around. We just won't be doing this because 
we don't know where we're going to be living. So there's that. Because <laughs> all of this has to go into a box pretty soon. <laughs> yes, everything behind both of us is going into boxes. So yeah. But, so everyone have a great summer and we will talk, see you in August. Yep. All right, guys. Have a good night.